everyone, this is Trevor from astrobackyard.com. I shoot deep sky astrophotography images here in my backyard in the city. Well, I'm in the garage right now. I'm not the most technical guy, and I certainly don't have all the answers. What I do have is a relentless passion for the night sky. Photographing objects in space excites me in a way nothing else can. Tonight is Saturday, January 6th. There's an extreme cold weather alert in my area with the nightly low dropping to minus 30 degrees Celsius with the wind chill. It's hard to describe how cold it actually feels out here, other than to say that my hands just don't work in this temperature. I've got a new propane heater for nights like this, but even this only keeps a small area of the garage warm. It is nice, and it's a real nice kind of heat too. It kind of feels like a campfire. As for my equipment, I think everything will be okay as long as my dew heaters can outlast Jack Frost. If you follow Astro Backyard on Facebook, you'll know that I finally took the plunge on a new wide-angle lens. The Rokinon 14mm f2.8 lens is very popular for astrophotography because of its combination between fast optics, a wide field of view, and affordability. Of course, a lens in this price range is going to have its drawbacks, but so far I am loving the creative shots that are now available to me. Expect a lot of information about this lens when things warm up and the Milky Way returns. All right, let's pick up where we left off. It's been cloudy for a week straight, but the, uh, the frost has come back, or back down to minus 20 tonight and uh, let's set up all over again. Wow, okay, so one week later, I got completely clouded out the last time I tried to shoot this video. It's slightly warmer tonight at about minus 15, so I'll take it. Tonight, I'll be shooting with a cooled color CMOS camera, the ZWO ASI 294MC Pro. The reason I'm shooting with this rather than the mono camera that I'm very excited about is because it's a moonless night uh, the moon rises early this morning in uh, Waning Crescent at 11% uh, illumination. So uh, I'm going to use this opportunity to shoot some true color RGB. I've finally got my motorized focuser installed on the telescope. It's the Pegasus Astro stepper motor kit and the dual motor focus controller. I was able to install the stepper motor myself on my Explore Scientific ED-102 refractor and it was pretty straightforward, I gotta say. It, the whole process took me about just over an hour, and the instructions were, were pretty good that came with it, and uh, the ones online were even better. It was really helpful to see uh, examples of the kit installed on some other telescopes. Some of the uh, examples I saw had the stepper motor uh, fitted right to the dovetail bar for a really secure connection right underneath the focuser. Uh, my configuration has it uh, bolted right to the bottom of the focuser. Uh, I've got everything locked in real tight and uh, I got the coupler in there and it's working well. The timing couldn't be better uh, because I can now control focus from inside the house and on cold nights like this, man, that comes in handy. I'll be using the standalone software that came with the Pegasus Astro stepper motor kit. The customer support from Pegasus Astro has been incredible. Uh, I've been dealing with them directly and they've been really quick to answer any questions I've had. The filter I'm using is the Bader Neodymion Moon and Sky Glow filter. 
So that's a two inch threaded filter that I use for these CCD style cameras um, when I'm shooting true color broadband RGB from my light polluted backyard. I needed to choose a winter deep sky target that would be rewarding with a short amount of exposure time. All right, I'm shooting Orion again. I know, I know, the Orion Nebula again. So overdone, right? Well, when your time is limited, you need to go for the slam dunk. It's such a spectacular target, I couldn't think of a better test subject for a new camera like this. I'll be using the Ioptron CEM60, which is still on loan from Ontario Telescope. I still need to do a review of this mount, but believe it or not, I've only had a handful of clear nights since October. I'm going to review this mount from the perspective of a backyard imager who values his time, limited clear nights, without a permanent setup. With that being said, it's been a monumental upgrade for my HEQ5. Oh, and the William Optics FLT132? Don't think I forgot about that either. My plan is to use that scope on the next clear night that doesn't drop below minus 10 degrees Celsius. So far, the clouds have been on and off all night long. I'll get six or seven three minute subs in and then have to wait 10 to 20 minutes as another wave of low clouds roll through. This is how this winter has went this year. Bitterly cold and lots of clouds. I'm controlling the camera with astrophotography tool. This is a great application if you're running CCD style cameras like the one I'm using tonight. It also works with the DSLR. As far as APT is concerned, I'm in CCD mode, but whatever you do, don't call a CMOS camera a CCD in an astrophotography forum. Trust me. I've taken a look at the few exposures I've managed to squeeze in tonight. For a preview of the dot .fit files I'm shooting tonight, I bring a light frame into Deep Sky Stacker to take a look at it. And man, do those frames ever look good. The Pegasus Astro Stepper motor has allowed me to really get those stars dialed in. Not only can I adjust focus remotely from inside the house, but I can achieve a higher level of accuracy because I don't need to manually turn the knobs. I'll save the temperature probe functionality for a future imaging session under cloudless skies. I tried every combination of stacking method possible in DSS. And I mean every combination. And I'm still ending up with a monochrome image, whether it's a green, a green version, a red version, or a blue version, uh, all one color. There's no actual true color in my image. And I'm thinking now the problem is because this sensor on the 294 MC Pro has a very unique Bayer pattern. And uh, from what I've read, um, I'm gonna need to bin these images two by two, which is why I was able to get true color in my cone nebula image because I bin those, uh, but my Orion images I did not bin, I left them full resolution, uh, which created the issues I'm having uh, when stacking. So with that being said, my final Orion image is going to be in black and white, um, monochrome, so uh, I hope you enjoy the image regardless. And uh, lesson learned, if anyone else is using the ASI 294 MC Pro, I'd love to know uh, your thoughts on this subject. Mm -hmm.